Okay, so I'm going to go for 2048 by 810 and a frame rate of 24 frames a second, duration of 10 seconds. Let's come over to the library, generators, look for color solid and bring that in. And let's make it white, reduce the saturation to zero. And so then I'm going to come over to properties. I'm going to set the scale to 200. Then I'm going to right click duplicate. I'm going to select this back one here, properties, position, Z negative a thousand. Then let's just close this group down, make a new group. So right click here, make a new group. I'm going to take my text tool. I'm going to type the word paper. I'm using Druk medium. I'm going to center align it. I'm going to make it nice and big. I'm going to come into properties, reset the transform. I'm going to just turn on the grid. So view show overlays and grid just so we can line it up in the center like this. Line up the center of the E, I think is the good thing to do here. OK, so that's our text. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a clone of that. So right click and make a clone layer and I'm going to duplicate that clone. So I'm going to take my second color solid here, the foreground one, and I'm going to right click and I'm going to add the image mask and I'll use my original paper text as the source and I want to invert it. So let's just close this group with the text in it. Let's turn back on this group and let's turn off the background there so you can see what I've done. Turn off that grid. We've now got a hole in this foreground white solid. So we can't really see anything just yet, but let's now add a light. So switch to 3D. So for my lights, let's come over to position. Let's go for something like negative 240 on X, 540 on Y and 500 on Z. Let's come over and adjust its intensity. So 300. And what we want to do is turn on shadows. And let's open up the shadows. Let's set the opacity to 50%. And let's go for 20 for the softness. OK, so we're now fairly well set up. Let's come back to the group with the text in it and let's turn that on. So what I'm going to do is turn off this background group here. Let's call that background. Let's just turn that off so we can see while we work. So I'm going to turn off one of these clones unless with this one here. I'm going to come down and select the Bezier mask tool and I want to mask out the P, the second P and the R. So using the Bezier mask tool, just because of the nature of this font, I need to do it this way. So reselect the clone layer, reselect the Bezier mask, turn off the first Bezier mask so we can see what we're doing here, just so we can mask this second P. Let's just turn off that mask again, reselect the clone, reselect the Bezier mask and just mask off the R like so. And then we can turn all three masks on. So now we've got PPR like that. And let's do the opposite with the other clone. So let's turn off this clone. Let's turn this one on. And here we need to mask out the A and the E. So reselect the Bezier mask tool. Let's just draw ourselves a mask for the A. I could have made life simpler by choosing a font where I didn't need to do this, but never mind. Let's reselect the clone, reselect the Bezier mask. This one's easy down here, down here, down here, down here. Turn back on the other mask, turn back on the other clone layer. So now we've got both clone layers masked as we need them to be. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this second clone layer, come to properties and rotation, open that up, so select the X, add parameter behavior via link, and I'm going to link to the first clone layer. So drag that into this source well. And I'm going to set the scale to negative one. So now let's turn back on our original background group here. Turn off my overlays here. You can see we've got a faint outline of where those letters are. But if we now select our first clone layer here and we adjust the rotation, you can see we've got our effect. And it's very pretty because of those sh soft shadows that we've got. So let's set up a little bit of an animation. Let's come to one second on the timeline. Let's come to the X rotation here of the master clone layer and let's set that value to zero and hit a keyframe. Let's come to five seconds on the timeline. Let's set that 
X rotation to 20 degrees. And let's come to nine seconds and set it back down to zero. Now I want you to look what happens at the beginning. It really does look like as though it pops, doesn't it? Just, you know, like that, even though we've only got like 0.2 of a degree of rotation there. It's kind of popped out rather than sort of appearing gradually. And unfortunately, that's because of the softness of the light. If we reduce that softness, we actually just remove it altogether so you can see it's much smoother without that softness there. So I think what I might do is just keyframe this as well. So if we set that softness to zero, come to one second and keyframe that at zero, come to five seconds and keyframe it at 20 and then come to nine seconds and set it back down to zero. We should have eliminated that really. So it's, it's a lot smoother there. We don't get that same sort of extreme change there. It looks a little bit more natural, but then in the middle, we do get these nice soft shadows as well. So I think that's the best of both worlds. And uh, what else could we do? We could just add maybe a camera. So add in a camera properties. Let's just set up its Y rotation. So I'm going to add a ramp to the Y rotation. Let's start with 20 degrees, end with 20 degrees. And that's going to look like this. Really quite pretty. So thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.